Hello, my name is Jeremiah Searles. Welcome back to another edition of Husker Huddle. Today we have a good friend of mine, Rex Burkhead's joining the show. How are you, my friend? I'm good, Jay. Uh, just quarantined up right now, man, but uh, hanging in there and uh, the family's good, so um, all good on our end. Hey, it's always good to hear, man. It's been a while since we caught up with you here on uh, Husker Sports Nightly. So, six-round pick back in Cincinnati 2013, which seems like forever ago. Um, you've spent the last four years with going into your eighth season now as a New England Patriot. Reflect a little bit back, Rex, on what this NFL career, I mean, now that I've retired, it's, I've had a little bit more time to look back and be like, man, that's gone quick. But even for you, I mean, you've done a lot. You've been won a Super Bowl. You've been on two different teams. What has your NFL career really looked like for you? And just kind of give us a, a life update as far as what the NFL means to you. Yeah, it's uh, it's been crazy. Um, you know, such a blessing for sure just uh, to be able to have the opportunity to play at the highest level. Um, like you mentioned, of course, played in Cincinnati for four years. Uh, you know, had some unbelievable teammates there I got to meet and, um, you know, develop relationships with and, uh, then been in New England the past three years and going on uh, my fourth year here uh, coming up. So um, it, it's been a thrill. I've uh, been fortunate to play in some huge games, uh, play in two Super Bowls, play with some unbelievable players. Of course, Tom, uh, now he's a Buccaneer, but uh, just playing along his side and uh, playing under Coach Belichick as well, um, you know, it's been unbelievable. I know you might not be allowed to talk about it a ton, but we got to talk about it, man. The NFL has been absolutely insane with the last free agency moves. And you mentioned Tom down to Tampa Bay. What's mm -hmm. that locker room going to feel like? Have you talked to some of the guys that have been there? I mean, maybe a guy like Edelman that's been there forever. I mean, what is it going to be like walking into the Patriots facility whenever that might be and not having, I mean, TB12 standing there? Right, yeah. I mean, it'll be different, of course. Um, you know, just the presence he always had, um, just his attitude every single day he walked in that facility, um, you knew he was there. And so um, it'll be different, but I'm excited for the challenge, excited for the new era um, of the Patriots. Um, but at the same time, just, you know, looking back on it all, very thankful for the times, you know, that I had with Tom and being able to play with him. I uh, learned a ton from him, um, just his preparation every single day and um, his ability to to lock in and stay calm through the most pressure situations um, is something I'll always take from him. Everyone I've talked to that's played with Brady says he's one of the best teammates that you'll ever be around. I got to know, is there like a Brady story that sticks out to you that like for the rest of your life, whenever Tom Brady gets mentioned, that's going to be the thing that comes to mind? Yeah, man. Oh, there, there's so many great moments. Um, I think one would probably be the AFC Championship game um, a couple years ago against the Chiefs. And uh, he just walked into the huddle and kind of looked up everyone. It was in overtime right when we were starting to drive and just smiled and looked around. And you could just tell, like, everybody was so locked in and focused and had all the confidence in him and he had all the confidence in us. Uh, they were about to go get the job done. And, uh, I mean, it was just like the leadership, uh, you could feel it, the aura around him. Uh, he knew what he was wanting to do, and he, he knew what he was capable of and what he was about to lead us uh, to accomplish. So uh, that one definitely sticks out in my mind. Awesome, Rex. Let's shift gears a little bit here. Let's talk a little bit more personal for your life. Expecting baby number two, correct? Yes. When is baby number two coming? Yes, number two, uh, another boy. He is planning to come May fifth right now. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, it'll be Steel. So Jet and Steel are our oh, two awesome. boys that we'll be having. So um, yeah, we're excited. Um, you know, we're still trying to explain to Jet that he's going to be an older brother. <laughs> uh, been giving him the play little dolls every now and then, and he's been throwing them around. So we still have a lot of work to be done. Um, but no, it's it's fun and we're excited. I mean, this is as crazy as a world that we live in right now. The fact that you're going to be able to be home with Danielle now through some of this, I mean, into the foreseeable future is a little bit of a blessing for you. And talking with some guys in the NFL, this is a weird time. Um, what are you doing now to try and maintain that peak physical performance that, I mean, as an NFL player, you have to year round keep that. You can't just because things are closed right now, just kind of go into hermit mode and stay home. Everyone I've talked to has a little bit different strategy to it. I'm curious, what has coronavirus done 
for the Burkhead household and for you specifically to keep your training up with? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'll still do my running up at the track, um, you know, not too far from the house. And then um, I have fortunate I got a few weights in the gym or in our garage, I should say. And then my parents don't live too far from us as well. And uh, they got a nice setup I use, you know, ever since I was a young little kid. So, um, you know, still have some iron to pump and, um, you know, things that I can go to um, just to get the exercise that I need to get in. Um, you know, of course, I'm not going to the gym or training facility I usually go to, but, um, you know, still getting creative at times, using Jet, you know, to get some some body weight exercises in and everything. So, uh, no, it's, it's crazy. Um, you know, it, it's very sad, everything that's going on. Um, and it is an adjustment period, especially for the NFL. We don't know. Um, you know, when we're going to be reporting for spring OTAs or even camp or any of that right now. So just trying to um, stay in the best shape as possible. Tell people a little bit. I mean, OTAs are an interesting time. As an older player now, you're going into your eighth season. It's very much routine-based for you. But, man, I remember being a first, second-year guy. OTAs were everything. I mean, they were where you learned how to be a pro, learned all that. I mean, how do you think this is going to affect league-wide some teams, especially some of the younger guys, not having this year's OTAs possibly at all? Yeah, it's definitely going to be, um, you know, a challenge across the board, um, you know, especially for the coaches wanting to get younger guys um, involved in learning the system as fast as they can. Um, you know, you got the draft picks coming in, of course, and uh, maybe some guys who haven't played as much in the previous years, you know, wanting to get them more acclimated. So, um, it'll be interesting. It really will. Um, I don't know how the NFL is going to do it um, as far as practices during camp or OTAs or what, but, um, you know, it, it's going to be new. Um, you know, we're used to being or leaving, going up to Boston in a couple weeks, and so I think it's all going to have to be shrunk down or um, I don't know if they're going to push it back or what. So, um, you know, very anxious to see what they decide on there. Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I think that the biggest thing is you're going to see a really a hit to the undrafted late-round pick guys that, I mean, if mm -hmm. you don't report till training camp, I mean, there's not going to be time to try and get these young guys looks because you got to get a team and ready to go. It's going to be really interesting to see how they navigate those waters. And the good teams will be the ones that will adjust, right? I mean, the teams that adjust and find a good way will be the ones that win in the fall. Um, Rex, I know you got a lot going on for Team Jack. You're supposed to have the Team Jack trifecta this past week, and uh, obviously that probably didn't happen. What are the plan going forward here for the Team Jack trifecta down in Plano? Yeah, so we're supposed to have it March 21st, and uh, had to postpone, of course, with everything going on. And uh, we're looking to do it in the summer, um, you know, maybe late June or in July, uh, but still kind of depends on how everything evolves here. Um, and our OTA training camp schedule, all that. So uh, we're looking during that time period, um, but still just a lot um, to be filled out here. Yeah. And uh, But the, the trifecta, we've raised over $200,000. Uh, this will be our fourth year to have it, and uh, it involves a football camp, a 5K, and football, or sorry, three-on-three -three basketball tournament. And uh, it's been great. The whole city, you know, comes out and supports us. And uh, it's really neat to see the NFL guys come out there and uh, coach the kids up, and they just absolutely love it. So, um, yeah, we're looking for the summer. Hopefully we can get it done and uh, look forward to another great year. You get to show off your basketball skills out there? Uh, unfortunately, no. No, I, uh, I wish I could join it. Uh, we actually had a team last year that had two former NBA guys that won the whole thing. So it gets it gets pretty competitive, um, and it's uh, entertaining for sure. I believe it. All right, before we let you out of here, Rex, we got to talk a little Husker football here. No spring ball for 2020, as we've talked about. But going into this year, it's a big year for Scott Frost and this program going into year three. What are some things as a former player, as a former Husker, a guy that, I mean, well-respected around here, everyone knows your name, what are some things you're looking for out of this 2020 Nebraska football team? Just, I mean, I'm not asking you to say we're going to win the national championship, but, I mean, real things, I'm talking to real players here that look at it from a different lens than most people. I mean, I've seen the growth in very small numbers and small ways. What have you seen in three years, and what are you looking for the product that's going to be put out this year? Yeah, and I, I think what you always want to see is jumps, jumps being made. Um, across the board, um, you know, and, and the way the guys play. 
And I think that's what you've seen. You've seen them respond. I think Coach Frost is getting the culture in there he wants. And um, when you see guys out there playing the way, um, you know, with toughness and, um, you know, never quit attitude, that, that's what you want. And I think that's what Co Coach Frost is finally getting um, out of his guys. And um, you can only go up from there uh, once you get that in place and, um, you know, understand that it, it's not going to happen overnight. And I think that's what everyone's realized, that um, it's going to take a little time and, um, you know, I'm excited for them. I'm excited for this year and uh, to see the jumps that they made um, this offseason. Absolutely, man. I think it's going to be a big year for Husker football. Rex, I can't thank you enough for joining us on this segment for Husker Huddle. I hope to see you next time you're back in Lincoln for a Husker game. Um, and I hope to catch up soon and give my best to the wife and the kids. Absolutely. You do the same, Jay. All see right, bud. Man. Take care, Rex.